Boy, g'day guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to my channel. Now this episode is a sort of part two from the last one of this type. If, you know, I'll drop the link in the description below from that video, but basically I broke the patrol. This is part two of what's happened with the heads. Yeah, that's right. So basically, what happened last time, I pulled the heads off and discovered that one of the valve seats had fallen out. So pretty much now, what I'm gonna do is pull it apart. I've been sort of making a few phone calls, a few emails to different people who can, you know, maybe help me with a new type of head, or I'm just basically taking this opportunity to do a power upgrade. And I wanna really go like a CNC ported head. So, so I pulled this one apart this morning, basically pulled all the valves out and this head's pretty much junk, I'll chuck it in the bin. This is actually the one that um, had the damaged valve in it. So I'll show you a close up of what it's really done to the head. I don't think it's rescuable. This thing's pretty much trash now. So we'll get into that and then send these things away and hopefully I'll get back to, well, hopefully in this same episode, I'll get the heads back and we can put this thing back together and, and see how she goes. Ah! All right, so what I'm gonna do next is the bottom pulley needs to come off. Because I've got the new heads and I can run more boost, the only way to get that boost is either to make the top pulley smaller on the supercharger or go a larger bottom pulley. Now I've already gone a reduced size on the top from the, uh, I think it's a standard 85 mil to a 75 mil. So the reason I'm gonna go a larger crank pulley is 10% overdrive, which means it's gonna spin faster and give more boost, but it's gonna give the serpentine belt more surface area to grab onto so it stops slippage. Basically, I've got the radiator draining at the moment because the radiator needs to come out because I need to get in there with some sort of puller, actually. I bought a puller before, I'll show you that in a sec. And um, that'll give me the access to get in there, get that crank pulley off because they're jammed on there goddamn tight. So it's gonna be a bit of a job. So let's get this thing off and then start looking at putting the new one on there. Oh, damn it. Looks like I didn't learn my lesson from episode one of Built Not Bought. Flashback to that. Okay, so that didn't quite go to plan, but uh... Bloody hell! <coughs> Ooh, that is really tight. Three days later. Okay, so we are back now. I couldn't get that bolt undone with a rattle gun, with anything I tried. And I have to take the bonnet off and get a massive bar. Um, truck the wheels, low range, all the brakes on. Someone standing on the brake and just have this huge tube and just pulling it across and that cracked it. So I've cracked the nut. So now the next mission is to actually get that pulley off so we can put the larger one on. Now, um, I've got a tool for that. So this is what I'm going to use. This is a hydraulic puller. So I've used this before, so I borrowed um, Josh's actually, so I ended up getting my own. So I think what we'll do is use the three-way claw. I don't have a lot of room between that actual pulley and the, um, where the, I took the radiator out, but the actual aircon condenser is sitting there, so I can't have it too deep. So I might try these small claws and hopefully that gives it enough split. Ta-da! Whew, that took a while. So there's that dowel in there I was telling you about. So I'll knock that back and let's get the other one on there. Oh my gosh, never a dull moment at Sam's Bush Mechanics. I tell you what, look, I thought I'd do the right thing and I was like, oh, I'm gonna change the, um, the crank seal like where the actual pulley goes on because it's, you know, I've just taken the pulley off, changed the seal because they wear out. And um, just one too many knocks on the hammer and I think I've just punched a bit of the casing inside the engine. So now there's a piece of metal floating around. God damn it, which means I have to take the water pump off to get that casing off. Also got to take a couple of bolts out of the sump. I need to change the sump anyway, so, oh yeah, I'll get to that, but. Yeah, now I'm going to pull that front cover off and hope that I can find that little piece of metal. I, it may have already been like that, but it looks like it's exactly where I hammered it and a little bit's chipped off and last thing you want is to put this whole thing back together and then 
have a piece of metal run through it and destroy it. So you know, I'll spend the day changing that now, I guess. For fuck's sake. All right, so you gotta get this, there we go. That stupid cover off. And now, voila. There it is, there it is. If I didn't find that, I would have been in a world of hurt. Time to get on Instagram. If you're not following me, Sam, or at Sam underscore Isles, check it out. Jeez, it would have been easier just to start again, I swear to God. Okay, so what we've got now basically, I've pulled everything apart. So the casing's off, I'm about to pull the sump off, I've got a new sump. So flashback to well when I smashed my sump like years ago. Only now I'm fixing it, so it's been a while, but I've got a new one finally from Mark's four-wheel drive. Whack the new sump on. No issue with the actual product or anything. It was to do with the clearance I didn't leave for that diff. That little piece, it was oh, like pain in the ass. Just knocking that seal out and it just took that edge off. Because I just tapped it a little bit too. This is cast bloody aluminium, it's just weak as piss. So I'm gonna get a new crank seal. I'm gonna have to get new gaskets. Like, I'd, you don't need to, just a bit of goo maybe or something, but I'm really anal about my gaskets, like, because you don't want any oil leaks with this shit. So I'm gonna get a full gasket set, get this case back on, change a sump, which has got its own gasket, get all these brackets back on, try and get that front end of the motor on, and then probably get the heads this week, I reckon. They're on their way, he told me they're on their way, so new heads will be coming, um, whack them on, and just get this thing back together, really. Like, actually, look at this. We mentioned about this crank. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the old um, dowel that we drilled in from the Harrops kit. So I'm gonna spin the crank around and drill over here somewhere for the new pulley, sort of start again. And these cranks don't actually have um, a keyway on them, the LS2s, they just slide on. But because the um, supercharger put so much force on that crank pulley and being an overdrive one, it's gonna slip, so we need to chuck in another dowel so it stops it slipping around, so. That's the plan for the moment. All right guys, now while I put this together, what I wanna do is run a little competition. I want you guys to guess and put a comment down below in this video what you reckon the power is going to be with these modifications because we're going to put the new heads on, we've got the new pulley, it's going to get a retune. If you guys can guess what horsepower it's going to make and what torque if you want to put in there as well as a bonus, in the next video I'm going to post the winner who's got the closest answer and you guys will win a merch pack. So I've got a couple of t-shirts, a uh, windscreen banner and some stickers to send you guys. So drop a comment down below what kind of power you think this is going to make and then keep an eye in the next video for the winner to be announced. Because you know, like, it's one of those things you get, like I actually don't even know what it's going to do, but obviously by the time this has been released, I probably would have already had it tuned and, and worked things out, but, you know, see if you guys out there can work it out. Oh, this is a different seal than the last one. Alright, well, the car's still rolling away, even though it's in gear, handbrakes on, it's in low range, in full drive, all that. As I turn the uh, crank around, it's pushing the car forward. So how about we put it all in gear and a piece of wood under each wheel might give us that torque we need. Time to finish off this crank pulley belt balancer once and for all. Now, blows my mind this. I had to get a new bolt because it was an ARP bolt. Once you kind of use them a couple of times and they stretch, they can weaken and I did not want this to snap off inside that crank there. So I used the old bolt to torque it up to like 200 or something. Um, and then it's kind of got to go in the bin. So I got a new bolt and f me, $68 for one bolt. Can you believe it? Mind blown. I gotta stop doing those explosion things, eh? Jesus Christ. Anyway, so according to these um, torque specs documentation that I had a look at, we've got 100, no, sorry, wrong. We've done the 240, now we've got a 37 foot pound. So I've set the torque wrench to 37 pound feet for the first pass. And then this is where it's a bit different to some bolts. It's not just a torque number. You actually gotta go, the final pass is 140 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll mark on the bolt 
a spot on the crank and on there, and then 140 degrees, put another dot, and I've got to try and wrench it round to that position. So, same deal. Hopefully the car won't roll forward too much and I can get a big bar on there and get it round to where it needs to be. I know when I put the actual motor together, I couldn't get it to that 140 degrees, but I got it pretty close. So, we'll just get it on as hard as we can. You want to put some lube in there so it's supplied with fastener assembly lube. So, I'll whack some of that on and then um, get this bolt in there, the crank done, then I can start putting all this water pump and housing back on. And then it's time for the heads. Heads have arrived, guys. Now, I just wanted to give you a quick little bit of a, a look at what I've done and why I've gone these heads. The standard one that I had is here, and it was the original out of the motor, 400,000 or so Ks on it, and then it dropped that valve seat, which is here. So this is what started the whole deal. Now, I chatted to my machine shop, and they said, look, yeah, we could fix that one, but who's to say the rest aren't gonna go, blah, 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 you know the story. So what I ended up doing is getting new heads. I was gonna send these over or get a new set. Ended up getting a new set. So this is a new casting head. Now, what I did at the same time, I just took this opportunity, thought, well, while the heads are off, why not do a few upgrades? And what I've done is actually gone and got these ported. So these have been machined and they've been ported to suit my application. Now what I've done is gone and opened that valley a little bit and the inlet and exhaust ports have been sort of machined inside to help the flow. So depending on your application, you can actually like do this the wrong way in a way. You know, being a blown vehicle, you kind of don't want to open up the actual volume too much. It's more just getting that flow through. So as the air passes in, it's not going to have any restriction and that'll help power, etc. Whereas if it was like a turbo vehicle as such, you can kind of open them up a lot more because there's way more pressure and boost sitting behind that valve. And when it opens, it just shoots straight in there. But with a, a supercharged vehicle, it's not as much pressure so you kind of want to just help the flow but not, not open it up too much where it actually needs more volume. So this is where those um, dish pistons will come into play as well. So I've got a 13cc dish piston which lowers that static compression which means a lot more volume of air can fit in there and it should theoretically make more power. So it's time for me now to get these heads on. So pretty simple, put in the mind. I'll just do what I did last time when we built the motor. There's an episode on that. I think it's episode 15 maybe, we're putting the engine together. So I've just cleaned up the block, um, whacked them on using ARP bolts. There's a certain pattern with that you've got to do when you're actually putting the heads on as well. So make sure you follow that um, torque pattern so they pull down properly. with the rocket gears as well, it's got to go on. Um, then I can chuck the blower on there next, so the blower can go on just the way it was. There's also a torque pattern for that, so Harrop's instruction manual gave me the, uh, the method and the sequence to do those bolts. It's a two-stage pass as well. Got that blower on, now I can start looking at hooking up all the wiring and everything that's to go on next. Everything pretty much just plugs in the way it was. I've got the exhaust back in there as well, so remember I've got them heat wraps. Radiator's got to go back in, batteries have got to be hooked up, power steering pump, water pump. Get the belt on there, which I need to figure out the new size it's going to be. And then we'll be close to firing it up. Alright guys, it is now time for a Patreon shout out. Now if you don't know what Patreon is, it is a platform where I put a lot of my videos on there before they reach YouTube. There's also a whole lot of behind the scenes footage and also conversations had about different ideas, merchandise, videos, all that kind of stuff. It's where I mix with you guys the most out of all the different platforms, reply to your messages, all that kind of stuff. So 
I've got a bit of a shout out for a few guys here who have been a long time members and specifically with the Copilot tier, which is the top tier that gives the most perks um, when you're subscribed to that particular level. So I've got Cal Williams from Bedforddale in WA. Now a lot of these guys are from WA because um, some of the perks on there means you can actually come to events that I'm going to be at and also drive days where you can come along cruise with me in the patrol as well as the comp truck and chances to drive that etc. Chris Connington, he's been a very long time member, he's from Lansdale in WA. Derek Aubrey, now he's a Brisbane, Queensland, absolute legend. Derek, um, being subscribed to that tier even though you're not in WA. Joel Gandy, he's from Girraween in WA, I've met him plenty of times as well. How you going Joel? He's always coming to the different events, shows and stuff like that. And then we've got Ricky Cook, who I think is a fairly new member. He's from the Northwest in New South Wales. So another guy from a different state. So it's awesome to see you guys on there. So there's some of the, the later members that have come on board for Patreon. So make sure guys, there's a link down below if you do wanna check out what's on Patreon. There's an intro video which explains the whole deal, what's going on there. But um, we'll get back to the video for now. Peace. <laughs> There we have it, she runs. Oh, sounds the same. <laughs> Oh, it's like nothing ever happened. Guys, make sure if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna go take this thing for a drive and then in next episode, we're gonna take it to the dyno tuners. And uh, remember, drop a comment below on what you think the power is gonna be and uh, we'll see how close you get. My guess, Jesus, I'm hoping for that 500 horsepower mark. That's what I'm, come on, let's do it guys. I'll see you in that video. Take it easy, peace. <laughs> I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here and I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe. <laughs>